Hello there. We now have three variants of the coronavirus, which started in the UK, South Africa and Brazil, which carry a large number of mutations. And these viruses behave differently to the coronavirus variants we've been dealing with since the pandemic started early in 2020. And these three variants are characterized by faster transmission rates. They spread more easily between people. They can escape from some neutralizing antibodies. So potentially they may evade the immune system slightly. It's not thought that they're going to affect the vaccines, however. It also appears that people who are infected with these variants make more virus. So that, in other words, there's a higher viral load. And there's a possibility that these variants might be more lethal compared to previous variants that we were dealing with. And this has been a big story in the United Kingdom in the past day, that the B117 variant might be a, a little more lethal than previous variants. But the data on this currently is very weak, and experts in the field are uncertain as to whether this variant is actually more lethal. And what I want to focus on in this short video is the fact that faster transmission rates is the thing we need to worry about most when we see uh, a new viral variant come along and that this is going to be most damaging to our way of lives and our ability to manage the pandemic than any of these other factors. So this is a hyp hypothetical scenario that I'd like you to think about and imagine it was your um, city, your region, um, where there were 10,000 cases of coronavirus infections with the with whatever variant is, is present in that region at that time. And we're going to start off with a variant like the, the ones we've been experiencing throughout 2020, which have a death rate of around 0.8%. And we're going to say that the infection rate in the, in the sort of current um, lockdown situations, management situations we have in our hypothetical city, that the infection rate is 1.1. So the virus is growing at a low rate. So what do we see in terms of number of cases? So we're starting off with 10,000 cases. So if we multiply that by 1.1 um, for the first time period, and let's say this is a week, uh, we're now up to 11,000 cases. And we can keep multiplying like this over, a, a, say, a five-week period, say. And at the end of that time, the cases have steadily grown, and now we're up to 16,000 cases, assuming nothing has changed about how we're, how we're um, uh, controlling social distancing and testing and tracing and so on. And we're saying this original variant has a death rate of 0.8%. So at the beginning here, when there were 10,000 cases, that has unfortunately led to 80 deaths. And over our five-week period where the virus has been allowed to grow steadily, we're now up to 129 deaths. And obviously cases in hospitals will, will increase in a, um, in a greater proportion. So let's now imagine we've got a strain that's appeared and we've identified in the laboratory um, different experiments and from, and from data from hospitals that um, this new viral variant is 50% more lethal. It's clearly bad news. We're going to get 50% more deaths. However, um, we're saying that the, the growth rate of that virus, the infection rate, is, is the same as what we were previously used to. So if the growth rate was the same, then obviously cases will be the same as what we had before. We'll get the same steady growth of this variant. And this new variant probably won't outgrow um, the previous variants because it's growing at the same rate. So it's sort of in the background. But let's say the whole population did have this more lethal variant. Then we're going to get more deaths. So out of our 10,000 cases at the beginning, we've now got 120 deaths because we're multiplying that by 1.2%. And by the end of our five-week period in this scenario, we're now up to 193 deaths. So a 50% more lethal viral variant is going to lead to 50% more deaths. Clearly bad news, but nowhere near as catastrophic as what we're going to see 
with a viral variant that is 50% more transmissible. So this variant is the same coronavirus that we've been dealing with. It's, uh, it gives the same disease um, and we get the same death rate come out of 0.8%. And so far, this is what we are seeing with the three new viral variants. It's more transmissible, um, but we don't have strong evidence that the death rate has changed. The disease seems to be the same. So, but we're now saying it's 50% more transmissible. So now the infection rate in the scenario that we've come up with, with the sort of um, social distancing restrictions that allows the previous variants to grow by 1.1, it's now going to grow by 1.65 over every time period we look at. So we start off with 10,000 cases. By week one, we're up to 16,500 cases. By week two, we're off the chart. We now actually need to change the scale of this chart. So I'm going to swap this chart out now. Same data, but we're going to change this axis. So here was the growth rate we had before with the previous variants. The, the, the blue one and the red one, which grew at 1.1 and gave us 16,000 cases by the end of five weeks. But our new variant is growing somewhat exponentially. And within five weeks' time, we've gone from 10,000 cases to 122,000 cases. If we now take 0.8% of these cases and, and calculate how many deaths we have, so initially we started off with 80, in five weeks' time, we've nearly 1,000 deaths in this po same population um, if we didn't change how we do our social distancing, testing and tracing. And you can also imagine that the number of hospital cases you have here for intensive care will, you know, would be stratospheric and, and probably would be overwhelming um, the healthcare system of this area at this time. So that's all I wanted to talk about today. This scenario um, was, was first put on Twitter by Adam Kacharski. He's an epidemiologist at the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. It's a really nice scenario to really explain very clearly that higher transmission rates are, are the things that are going to allow this virus to spread out of control. Thanks for watching. Um, please do look at our previous videos um, that explain the coronavirus, everything about the molecular biology you need to know, and look at the data of the spread of these new variants in detail. Please give us a like and consider subscribing. Thank you.